G'day, Chudgy Care, and welcome to Lord of the Rings. Okay, we haven't played this in a while, so uh, I'm a little bit rusty. A bit rusty, and let's be honest here, I haven't optimized this deck as probably as well as I could have. But then again, this isn't a particularly hard quest we're going to do. And as for the quest, we are actually starting the very first Daradel cycle quest. So I'm starting the Daradel cycle. And that basically means part of the reason I do the, these videos is to test all the quests and adjust the mods. So once I finish the Daradel cycle videos, I will start on the next cycle. For this mod and I also get to play this game now in my own games I usually always play uh, solo right but I'm gonna be playing two-handed because it really gives you a different feeling playing two-handed this game regardless of the fact of how it's advertised is really a two-player game you know it's really a game that is designed for two players there's lots of player cards that only trigger for two players there's lots of uh you know quests that are just balanced best for two players to get the real experience with this game you have to play two players is what i'm trying to get at here and i think that in general because i've mainly played solo Playing two-handed is really giving the whole game new life for me because I'm seeing all these card interactions that I've never been able to see before. Like, who would have thought that that Took card is actually freaking awesome? You know what I mean? The one that jumps between players and lowers and raises threat, you know? What about Longbeard Map Keeper actually doing a, a worthwhile peak? You know, things that are just, you know, like... Cut encounter cards that target last player actually move around the table. Interesting stuff. So while this is a multiplayer game, it's really a two-player game, I think. And uh, let's get straight into this. We are playing the first of the Daradar cycle, so it's Into the Pit from the Kazadoom expansion. Now, you'll note that Daradelf doesn't actually have Nightmare Packs. The Nightmare Packs start in the Shadow cycle, I think, so... Those people who are still hanging out for me to do some more nightmares, they're coming. Okay, because we're doing it in uh, cycle order. Now, as always, when you do your setups, you have to choose your you choose your first player, then you load your starting hands, then you do one B one A, which in this case has nothing on it, and then once you do one, once you then you choose your mulligans, then you do one B. That's the order of things. So we're going to do our mulligans here, and this is a very good hand. We basically have some great cards. You've got us some threat reduction. We've got a recursion. We've got uh, more recursion. We've got a one drop, which is very important in this quest. We've got a cheap good meal for basically this allows you to cast a greeting for one mana and we've even got light of valinor which is a ridiculous card and part of the glorious combo of glorfindel i'll explain that a bit later so we are definitely going to keep this hand so let's pass on that mulligan meanwhile what have we got here wow this is another fantastic hand we have the belt, we have the card draw, I mean the resource draw, and we have a one drop. And we have some uh, shuffling. Yeah, so this is a very good draw as well. We're going to pass on that. Okay, now let's get straight into this. Entering the mines into the pit. You have been sent by the White Cancel Man to Moria Man to deliver the message man to Balin Man and his Dwarven Company Man. We have not heard from him in a while, bro. Okay, so we're heading off to Moria. The doors to the east gate hang crooked on their hinges. The darkness inside the doorway is still and impenetrable, shutting out the last beams of a sinking sun. Reveal one encounter card per player. 
Yablamo and Yablamo. Each player may choose and discard one card at random from his hand or Foul Whale gain Surge. I don't want to risk that, so I'm just going to Surge it. Bam. That's a pretty bad start. Okay, so what's important here is the players cannot advance to the next stage of the scenario unless Bridge of Khazad-dûm is in their victory display. So what happens here is we have the East Gate. When we complete the East Gate, we place the first hall, and then after the first hall, we do Khazad-dûm, and then after Khazad-dûm, we can finally expand. Now that basically means this is a seven point location, but this is a seven point location, that's 14. This is a two point, and this is a three point. That's another five. So it's 19 points to get past this location, assuming that we keep one of these three locations in the travel part for every turn. So it's basically a 20 point because it takes one turn to get to get to this guy into the location area. So it's basically a 20 point quest, which is pretty huge. Now, What's interesting also is that the East Gate is the only one of these three locations immune to card effects. So you can't use Tracker, you can't use Lorien Guide, you can't use Asseloth, whatever. But the more important thing is players cannot optionally engage enemies and no engagement checks are made. So that's the big thing about this card. And it's really thematic because you kind of like go through the gate and then you get into the first hall and you can hear the little monsters skittering around and they kind of start chasing you and you after this there's a huge ambush so just a really cool going into the mines kind of thing now we have a horrible 17 point uh start here which is just horrendous we've got east gate is seven we've got a mine shaft which is five we've got a fouled well which is three now, I could have stopped that from surging, but I didn't want to risk losing these two cards, and we definitely wanted to keep this card. So, I don't know. Pretty harsh. Okay, so we're ready to start. Let's get into this. First thing we need to do is draw our next set of cards. Your blammo. Okay, so we just put out the good meals. These can only attach to hobbits. There's no limit to them or anything. This is the cave torch, which is attached to us during the setup. It's restricted. And basically what you do, you just tap it like that, and you get to place three tokens of your choice on any dark location. And then because you're using the torch, it's sort of visible in the night. If uh, a monster is around it'll attack you. Well, it'll go into the staging area. I'll show you that in action. We're going to use that all the time. So we're definitely spending one and placing out you. And I'm going to spend two and place out you. Okay. Now, this quest has a very, very nasty card. There's only one copy of it in the standard deck. And it basically kills one of your questing characters. So what I like to do is have a turn one drop so I can add it to the quest, even if it has zero will, just so there's something in the quest. But in this particular case, I'm going to risk the first turn because of this heavy, heavy problem up here. And because you're going to have so many resources down this side. Oh, look, we have Asseloth. That's excellent. Because we've got so many resources. I really want to... Yeah, I really want to be able to pick out a really good card for next turn. So if that card comes up, it's basically game over. Meanwhile, over this side of the world, we have a one drop, which is very important. And I'm just going to go one two and place out the steward which I then tap for two and place out Navri's belt. Now Navri's belt basically is a multicolored card allows you to cast any icon. This is a fantastic card. I don't know why people don't like this card more. I mean it can only attach to dwarf heroes and they you know 
I mean, Dwarf Heroes are great. But the, the thing is, it only gives you the icon till the end of the phase. And, you know, people don't like that. They prefer songs, which is a permanent. But the, but really, the Navri belt is awesome, in my opinion. Okay, so that's done. Now, because we are using Dane, all the monsters, uh, all the dwarves get plus one will, because he's plus one will while he's standing up. So we're going to quest like that. And this is going to give us only a negative three, which isn't that bad considering we have to get past 17 and it's turn one. Now there are some issues here. As you said, the monsters will not attack us, but there is one set of monsters that will. So hopefully we don't draw them. And let's go. Your blammo. Okay, so we start off with a Watchful Eyes. These basically attach to one of your heroes, and if they're tapped at the end of the combat phase, you have to add things to the staging area. We're going to stick that on good old Wolfindel. And the next one is a monster. Now, this monster does not attack us. I'll show, I'll show you the monster that comes. It's like a blue kind of card, the monster that actually attacks us. But remember, there's no engagement check, so we're fine. Now, we are minus four. So that's minus four threat to everybody. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tap the cave torch to put three tokens. I'm going to place the three tokens on the mine shaft. Now, when you tap, you draw a card. If it is a monster, it goes in the staging area. Otherwise, it's discarded. And then we're going to use this action ability to raise our threat by two to place two tokens. So at the moment, we're negative four. So this action is going to save us two threat. So that's one, two, one, two. We place another two tokens. That's five tokens. This is cleared. We're now plus one, actually. And bam. We're then going to travel to the escape. Now this thing here does have a forced ability when goblins come out, but it just removes progress tokens. And as there were no progress tokens, nothing happened. Then we're just going to attack in the staging area using Dune here. And basically he only has two attack, right? But when he attacks in the staging area, he gets plus one. So he's attacking for three. And every single monster except two types in this quest can be killed with three attack. So, yeah, blammo, he's gone. So, nice recovery. Now, let's, uh, let's tap you. And I think I'm actually going to go five into this deck. She basically allows you to look at the top five cards of your deck and reorder it. So, this is a horrendous hand. Suppose I'll do that. So we've basically got a dead hand for the next whole bunch of turns. Uh, yeah, we'll put it in that order. Okay, that's in that. Let's draw and get onto it. Your blambo, your blamblio. Okay, so tap one, one, two. So I'm going to go one two and place out this bloke and to do that i have to tap the belt to add the law icon and then i'm also going to go one two and place out asaloff so we basically have our glorfindo combo running on turn two which is pretty crazy asaloff is a bonkers card it allows you to place two tokens on any location combined with the three tokens from this is just kind of crazy. Okay. So, that's that. Quest, quest, quest. Oh wait, I haven't done that. What was I doing? Oh yeah. Ever my heart rises, we're gonna play this. And we're gonna stick this over here. Basically, if you travel to a mountain or underground location, you can ready the character and reduce your threat by one. Very cool card, especially in the Daredelf cycle. Now, we basically, what are we going to plan? What are we planning to do here? I think we're going to just uh, save 
I'm not really going to do anything here. Let's just tap you to quest. And we're at plus nine. Okay, let's draw Bamo. Okay, so burning low. This adds huge amounts of threat to the staging area. This one, for example, would add three, six. I would add six uh, threat to the uh, staging area, which is quite a huge amount. We can actually handle that if we wanted to, but I don't think we want to because it has an ability, players may exhaust the cave torch to cancel this effect. So we just go bam and it's canceled. So this card really isn't a threat in any way. It's just designed so you can't place three tokens every single turn using the cave torch. Sometimes you'll use it to cancel this. And the next one is another monster. Okay, so we're plus eight, which is plenty. We only need seven to beat this, but this is removed, remember, because of the goblin tongues. This, because a goblin came out. So we're eight, so that is still one up here. This is discarded, and this first hall comes into play. I'm then gonna tap Asiloth and place two progress tokens on first hall. That's gone. This comes into play. And I'm also going to travel to the Fouled Well. The Fouled Well is an underground location. So we get to untap this bloke and reduce our threat by one. And then this guy is going to attack. We can optionally engage. We don't need to though, because this is the first player and he has the higher threat. So you blam, in he comes. We then block with our Dane. Cancel or combat damage to attacking enemy. That was very annoying because we could have killed him with this bloke. Still, not a bad turn. Okay, so let's tap you. Uh, actually, let's tap you and we're going to peep, uh, what's this say? Top five cards of your deck. Uh, well, yeah, let's tap you and we'll just do one, two, three, four, five. See what's coming. Okay. So this is actually quite a good set of hands here. We're going to actually move this one up. And then I think I want this one and this one. Okay, so return to top. So we've got a, quite a good draw there. Now, unfortunately, this guy can only search his own deck, which means that we can't use him to stop the shuffle. What I like to do is have this guy killed and moved over to this side using, using uh, stand and fight. Okay, so that is the end of that. And let's draw. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard a good meal. That reduces the cost of our next event by two, which means for one cost, I can cast greeting. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I'm going to spend one to cast Dwarven Tomb to pull Greeting back into my hand. I'm then going to discard the second good meal and do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nice. And now I'm simply going to quest. We still have no questers on this side, which is horrendous. Meanwhile, over here, let's tap you and get another two resources. I'm going to spend one resource and place out Shadowborn Scout. This allows us to place a progress token on any location. I'm going to place it on the Bridge of Kazadun. 
Remember, only the east gate was immune to card effects. And then I'm going to go... One, two, three, four, and place out a Longbeard Orc Slayer. There's no monsters up here, so it doesn't really do anything. But it is a dwarf, which is good. Okay, so let's go quest, 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 and quest. Now we are questing with the Master Forge, even though he doesn't produce a will. So if that card comes up, we can kill him. In fact, what I'm going to do is actually do this. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm questing with a Shadowborn Scout so he can be killed if that card comes up. And we're not, and we're only questing with uh, Glorfindel here. So that can be, if this card comes up, we're in real trouble. I guess we can kill, we can kill Dune here because now that we've passed that stage where no one's in the staging area, where they can't leave the staging area because we got through that so quickly. His ability is kind of... His, his use in this deck is limited. So what I might do is I might quest with him as well. Okay. Boom. We're plus eight. So let's draw one and two. Well, we get both patrol leaders and they are both at 30 threats, so we're way under threat. But we do get two tokens, so let's go one, two. I am gonna ta tap the cave torch and draw one more card. It is not a monster, so it gets discarded. We put another three tokens down, one, two, three. We're now at five, this is five, this foul well is completed. We did get two orcs, so that actually wouldn't work. So that was one, two, three. So we had two on here. So two of these orcs came out, which would have taken two of them out because those were removed by the Goblin Tunnel. So there's only three on here, but we do have Asloth, so we're going to tap that. Place another two, that creates five. We now have completed that. We are then going to travel to the Goblin Tunnels. Now this effect is only active when it's in the staging area, by the way, so that effect is now gone. And because this is an underground location, we can untap and reduce our threat by one. Okay, so I'm going to tap you. Nothing happens. He's attacking for three, defending at three. We're going to attack back for three, four, five. Uh, I did that wrong, whatever. I was supposed to defend with this bloke. That was the plan. That's why I left him on tap. So we're defending with him. This guy kills him. Then attack back for three, four, five. That guy is definitely dead. Then we cast one, two with our stand and fight. And we bring this guy to this side of the table. I then tap you to look at the top five cards. We actually get some attachments, so I'm going to pull this attachment out, because this basically says, put an attachment in your hand, and we're going to return and shuffle, and that's going to reshuffle that deck. And then I'm going to tap you to look at the top five. And... Let's grab this guy. Return to top, and then I'll do this bloke. So that one's pretty much set for a while. Return to top. You blam. And that's the end of that turn. Okay, now what's interesting here is we now have five dwarfs. We have the three dwarfs here, plus we have two dwarfs up here. 
And that will trigger Oakenshield's redonkulous ability of plus one resources every collection phase. So, bang. And Ori now draws another card. Boink. Okay. So, what have we got here? So, I'm going to go... One, two, three, or oh, and tap you for two, and place out Gloin. Gloin says if we have five dwarfs, which we do, add another two resources to any hero's pool. Let's have a quick look down here. We don't need resources on that side, so I'm going to place two resources onto Dane. Then I'm going to go one, two, three, and place Long Bed Map Keeper. Then I'm going to go one, two, three, and place out Long Bed Map Maker. So we just have a whole bunch of doors come out. So we can probably no longer quest with this guy. That guy's got one attack, one attack. Yeah, so we won't quest with this guy either. So that's really changed up our questing. Uh, is there another dark location? There's no dark location, so. He gets plus one. He gets plus one. And he gets plus one. Okay. So, quest, 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 quest. Meanwhile, over here, we go one, two, three. I just want to get this guy out naturally. We, technically, we could use his special ability, but I don't really think it's necessary. So, we're adding him to the quest. He also gets plus one because Dane's ability is dwarf characters. It doesn't say that they're his dwarf characters, anyone on the table. So he is actually a three drop, three, uh, three quester, which is pretty strong. And we're going to spend one place a Mathan onto the goblin tunnels. Actually, I'm going to place it onto. Uh, I'm going to place it onto the bridge of Kazadoom. Okay, so that's all done. So we are currently questing for plus six, which isn't a huge amount to be honest. Uh, I think I will quest with this bloke. So we're now questing for plus 10, because remember this guy is three will plus one. So he's actually four will, that guy is bonkers. Okay, so bam and bam. Okay, so this guy is Branching past. This guy adds quite a lot of threat to the staging area to any dark locations, but there is only one dark location at the moment, so that's actually only adding one threat. Seven is still plenty threat here. So that is seven. That is gone. We're not going to do anything fancy here. So that's gone. And I'm going to travel to this location. It is an underground dark location, so this guy readies and reduces his threat by one. So this guy is a, a goblin swordsman. He gets plus two tech if undefended. So I think this guy needs three to kill. He actually attacks with three, so that's fine. This guy needs seven to kill, so that's three, four, five, six, seven. 
This guy attacks at 20, so he will attack one of us. Okay, so I think I'm just going to... I think I'm going to optionally engage this guy and have this guy manually engage. So he's a 30. Don't really need to do this, do we? I think I'll just leave him up there, actually. So boom, that comes down. We'll tap you, flip this over. Defending player raises threat by two. One, two. And then we just attack. This guy is killed. I'm then going to tap you and peek at the top five. Remember, we draw two cards, so we set this up the way we like it. Let's go bam. Let's go bam. Return to top. And I'm just gonna go bam, top five. There's nothing in here we want. Bottom and shuffle. Okay. Blamo. Blamo. Okay, let's go one, two. I'm gonna place this onto Dane. This is unexpected courage. It stops them, it allows them to untap. And we're pretty much good. So let's tap you. Remember, this guy is contributing three will every turn because of light. Oh, and you know what I forgot to do? Because I'm an idiot. I forgot to get rid of this location. I'm so stupid. Oh, well, let's just do this. So I'm going to tap this. I'm going to place two tokens on here. And this only requires three, so this is completed, and it has an Ancient Mathan, which allows the first player to draw three cards. So that is all cleared. And we draw three cards, one, two, three. Okay, get one of these guys. Oh, we're gonna go one, two, and place this guy over here. So reduce your threat by three, raise the other player's threat by three when he swaps sides. That is one, two, three, one, two, three. It's uh, three. It's important for this guy to be over our threat. And we're pretty much good. Meanwhile, over this side of the world, we get plus one resource and we get to draw another card. Let's spend one of these, put out another dwarf. And let's tap you, get two more resources. I'm going to tap this guy and spend two resources and place out Burning Brand. Now, this is kind of a controversial thing, I think. Not everyone really really gets this, but it's completely 100% legal. The way it works is that this card here requires a law matching resource to have it attached to a hero, right? It can actually attach to characters, which is amazing. But this guy doesn't have a law resource. But this thing can add a law resource, and we had to tap it to actually play the card. Now, what's interesting is that the check only occurs when you play the card. So when we played, so when we played this card, it had a law resource. So even though that law resource falls off, Burning Brand doesn't. It's now a permanent card and we're ready to rumble. And that's that. Okay. So we have a redonkulous amount of power, questing power here. So what I'm going to do, I want to complete this, if I can, this turn. So let's go. Bam, bam, bam. I keep forgetting about Longbeard's ability. I don't think it's mattered, but we'll got to keep an eye on that. 
think I will not quest with him, but I will quest with you. I want to leave some blockers up. That's giving us plus nine. Okay, let's go Bamo and Bamo. Deal one damage to each exhausted character. Two damage if the active location is dark. So that is a dark location. So dead. One, two. Dead. One, two. Two. Okay. We're still plus eight. This thing adds a threat token to itself. Should have quested with him. I don't know why I didn't. So let's uh, tap you. We're going to add one, two, three tokens here. After branching path, oh, and then we draw a card. It is not a monster, so it's discarded. So after branching path, please play. Look at the top three cards. Place one into the, choose one and reveal it, and then move the other two to the bottom of the deck. So that's gone. Actually. I'm going to put the three tokens on this one here. So that's gone. So that's uh, three from the encounter deck. Do lightless passage, return these ones to the bottom. And this one will go up here. Bam, so that's plus one. So I'm also going to do this. We get plus one and minus three. One, two, three. We're now plus two. Bam, bam. Okay. Still not doing particularly well here. Rightio. Let's uh, optionally engage this guy. We're going to defend with Dane. He gets a card, but it's automatically discarded by Burning Brand. I might just put this here so you can see that a bit easier. And then I'm just going to go three, four, five, six, seven. We only need seven to kill him. But he has an ability, before the patrol leader, you draw a card. If it's a monster, he's not killed. It's not a monster. And there's that hazard that I was telling you about. First player must discard one questing character. There's only one copy of that in the deck. So that being gone is a big deal. Okay, so that's not a monster. So he is actually killed. Okay, let's tap you. We're going to peek at the top five. We're looking for our healers. Still no healers. Let's uh, do that. Return to top. Meanwhile, over here, let's tap you. Top five. I think I'm going to take a Mathan. And return to shuffle. Okay, so, Bamo. And Yablamo. He gets plus one and draws another card. We tap you and get another two resources. Okay, so that's one, two, three. Out comes the map maker again. He's back, baby. Yablam. And... Well, I may as well do it. Let's go... One, two, three, four. Placing out Aristor. And we'll tap you for law. One, two, and place out you. 
Now, does this say, after you play, return the topmost attachment in any player's discard pile to his hand? So, we're looking here. Search. And the top attachment is... Okay, how does this work? So, the top attachment is the bottom of this. Yeah, so that's the top attachment, the Ancient Mathen. So, this comes in a hand. You blam. Okay. Meanwhile, over this side of the world, there's still nothing we can really do. We're going to go one, two, and place out two Mathens. Like so. Bonk. Okay. Quest. Meanwhile, over this side of the world, is that a dark? Yeah, so let's go quest, 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 quest. That gives us plus nine. Let's go quest. That gives us plus 11. Oh, and this guy gets another one as well. So that gives us plus 12. That should be plenty. Bammo. Okay, Goblin Follower. When revealed, the Goblin Follower engages the last player. That's this bloke over here. And another one. Each player must exhaust a character and discard the top card of his deck if able. If the printed cost of the discarded card is equal to or higher than the remaining hit points of the exhausted character, discard the character. So, basically, this deck here, we're kind of safe, but not safe, if you know what I mean. And what I mean by that is there's only, there's three cards in this deck that are higher than four, that are four or higher. So if we tap this guy, he's completely safe. But if we do so, this will trigger. I might just stick that, make that a bit more clear. Like I said, there's 33 cards and three of them haven't been, three of them have not been the, uh, so this is a risk. This is a risk. Oh, I'm gonna risk it. Bam. Bam. Okay, excellent. So that costs one. He's got four health, so that is fine. Over here, it's a lot more dangerous. I'm actually going to just sacrifice this bloke. Let's draw a card. Oh, it's zero cost, so he does not die. That's unbelievable. Okay, whatever. You blammo. That's both the cards, because the other one came down here, didn't it? Okay, so we're plus 12, which means that is, uh, there's already two here, so that's one, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, bam. Okay, so this is cleared. Now remember, this has that weird ability that we have to place cards in the staging area. We choose three and everything. So that's cleared. It has two Mathens, and they're both, uh, they're both, they target the first player. So he draws one, two, three, four, five, six. God, what a terrible draw, look at that. We then look at the top uh, three cards from the encounter deck. 25 or higher cannot... Okay, this guy is 20, so you can actually optionally engage that. So let's put this guy into the staging area and return these ones to the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to use Wander and Took to send him over here. That is one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's even up that health. And then I'm going to have Hobbits. Hmm, what am I going to do here? That's one attack. Yeah, so this is annoying. 
Plasma's exhausted torch. So we're going to exhaust the torch and travel to here. That untaps him and reduces his threat by one. And I think I'm actually going to keep the took over here. So that's one, two, three, one, two, three. That means this guy is going to attack down here and we can probably get this bloke as well. So we need seven to kill. So that's three, four, five, six, seven. So that's one. And two. And a block. Yeah, okay. And then we'll get this guy to attack as well. Right. So he gets a card, he gets a card. Actually, wait, this guy is 37. That means he doesn't have to attack us at all. What am I thinking? So he's going to stay up here. This guy's not going to attack us at all. Okay, so that's what we're doing. So then I block with uh, Dane. That automatically discards whatever this is. I then attack for three, four, five, six, seven, which is enough to kill. So we reveal another card. Is it a monster? It's not a monster, so he is killed. And then I'm just going to... This guy is going to be a real pain in my keister. I'm going to tap you, draw a card... Nothing. He attacks for three. He defends at two. So that's one wound. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to advance the freaking quest. God, I'm an idiot. The skeletons and dwarves of orcs lay undisturbed, but you have discovered no recent sign of the dwarven colony. The sound of scampering feet travels to your ears, and you move in the direction to investigate. There is a patrol of goblins marching in a loose formation throughout the shadows. When revealed, each player must search the encounter deck and discard pile for one enemy of its choice and add it to the staging area. One choice must be the patrol leader. Now... We just killed a patrol leader, but there was one other in the discard pile. So we're bringing that guy out and we'll need one more monster. So I'll grab this guy's 37 threat. So they're the two cards we bought out. So we're basically in the same boat. Okay. Everything else is fine. This guy's going to be a real hassle. Finally, I'm going to tap you, peek at the top five. Where is our healers? We're on what, 23 cards to go. It's unbelievable. Let's, uh, we're going to have enough credits for that. That's one. Yeah, that'll be able to pay. Yeah, I think what we're going to do is that, actually. Return to top. Then over here, we're going to tap you, peak five, grab another. Grab another uh, unexpected courage. Okay, so that is, let me just quickly make sure I put them back in the right position. There we are. Okay, refresh, draw a card. Horrible. Okay. So, one, two, we're going to place another. Actually, I'm going to place this onto Dune here. 
And I'm also going to go one, two and place this bloke out or chick out. She adds plus one uh, defense to someone. So quest, quest, and that'll add a defense to Frodo. Meanwhile, over here, we go tap, one, two, we get plus one and we draw a card. We're going to use Estraw's ability to discard a card and draw a card. I'm then going to go tap to turn that into a tactics. One, two, three, and place out the battle master. And I'm going to spend one to place out another scout which will place a single point on here. Okay. Now we just need to quest. So these guys are questing. Now, this is 11 points to get through. Forced. After an enemy is revealed from the encounter deck, discard it. So no more enemies are coming out. So basically we've gotten through the Cas of Doom and now we just have to face the patrol leader and his little squad. Shouldn't be a problem. In addition, uh, when we when no enemy is in play, we can immediately advance, even if we haven't put 11 tokens. So we don't need to quest too for hard here. It's more important to clear everything. So let's just quest with you and you. I keep forgetting to use his ability. Let's try and use it this time. Let's just quest like that. That gives us plus eight. That's plenty. So draw. Remove all progress tokens from the current quest card. We There's one token here, so we just remove that. And draw. Surge plus Doom 2, so that's 1, 2, 1, 2, and Surge. Each player must choose and discard one card at random. I'm fine with that, so let's discard one card randomly. And we'll discard one card randomly. Ah, oh, we lose resourceful, that sucks. Okay. We're plus five, which clears this location and places one point on here. We can tap this guy and place, well, let me just have a look after. So this says, after it's revealed from the encounter deck. So that means that this ability is now free. After Cage towards Exhaust, discard the top card of the encounter deck. If that card is an enemy, add it to the staging area. Actually, no. Add to the staging area and reveal to the staging area a different. So this will still place monsters in the staging area. So there's no real need for us to go hard to to get rid of this this turn, because like I said, we don't need to get those 11 points. But I will tap Asaloth and place two points on it. We then travel. Uh, we can... Now, this is an interesting question. This says, after you travel to mountain or underground location, ready attach character and reduce your threat by one. Now, in my... The way I read cards is that if that said ready attached character full stop, reduce your threat by one full stop, full stop, that's two commands. But this is a command that is a sequence of commands. So without readying, I don't think you can reduce his threat, which is a real bummer. So we're not going to reduce his threat. And anyway, so that's plus eight. So that is. Wait, did I? So that's, if I'm plus, oh wait, so this is, yeah, so this is up here, right? So that's five, so four, five, okay. I understand what's going on now. Okay. Now, we will optionally engage this guy. Well, we don't, well, we don't even need to optionally engage because this third is at 30. Both these guys attack at 37, so that's fine. Now, 
This guy here is pretty bonkers. He gets plus one attack for each other dwarf ally. And we currently have one, two, three, four, five dwarf allies. So he's actually attacking for one, two, three, four, five. Oops, uh, not defending. What is it? Attacking. So we defend with Dane. He gets a shadow card, which is automatically discarded by Burning Brand. And then I attack for five. Well, that's six, seven, eight, nine I attack for. And that kills him, but we have to draw a card. It is a monster, so one of his patrol actually got killed instead. What a hassle. Then over this side of the world, I'm going to defend with Frodo. He gets a card. Defending player raises threat by two. One, two. And then I'm going to... Oh, and he attacks for three. He defends at three, so no damage. We're then going to attack twice into the staging area using Dune here and kill both of these guys. Oh, and before we draw, of course, we're going to tap you. Peek at the top five. Unbelievable. Still no healer. Still no uh, condition attachment removal. That's un that is crazy. Oh, you know what I've been forgetting. These guys are attacking at four, so he actually has two wounds on him. Okay, so... I guess I'll do that. Return to top. Meanwhile, let's tap you. I don't think there are any more attachments in here. And draw. Come on. Unbelievable. Let's place this out here. Okay, so we get one more card and an extra resource. Okay, so that is... Is there any attachments in here we want back? I guess we can get another good meal. We've already got one on the table though, so we can get another... Yeah, let's, get eight, let's get an Ancient Mason. So let's go tap one, two. I'm going to go... One, two, three. What's this guy do? Draw two cards. I'm just going to go one, two, three. Place out this bloke. Exhaust to choose a location. It gets minus one till the end of the phase. If that location does not contribute any will instead, if it's underground. Won't really make a difference to us. I don't really need to you put this guy out, do I? I'm actually going to place two and place out this bloke. I'm then going to tap you and go one, two, three and place out Dory. And then I'm going to use your ability to discard and draw. It's another dead card. Okay, so we've still got two mobs to get rid of. I'm actually going to transfer this guy over here. So that is one, two, three, one, two, three. Does this guy have any monsters? No. Okay, we don't have a standard fight anyway, do we? Okay, so let's go quest, 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 quest. We draw a card. Oh, wow. For the first time that I've noticed, it's a Stairs of Nain. Okay, so the Stairs of Nain is a location. That means that this guy's ability is actually going to trigger or I'm going to remember to trigger it. So after 
So this guy is actually more complicated than you think. Basically, you get to peek at the at the top of the deck. Now, because I play solo, I just draw, and if the first card's a, a, a location, I trigger it. But the way commitments work is that each person commits in order. So this guy commits, then this guy commits. But you commit in a single go. So if this guy is the first player, this player gets to peek at the top card before he does his commitments. Anyway, regardless, uh, this is a location. So we get to place one token here and he gets an extra will. Because this guy says two will, but every time there isn't a location, it's negative one. So I've set the mod to understand this guy as one will, because that's the most common way he's used. So he's actually, at the moment, he's three, because he gets the plus one from, from Dane as well. Okay, and we draw another card. Yablam. Remove all progress tokens from the current quest. Yoink. And that's that. So we are actually plus 16. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. So we have actually cleared this manually because we are so bad. And this does say players can also advance by placing 11 tokens. So that goes as well. This also goes. You have captured a member of the patrol and pressed the wounded goblin for information about the dwarves. It gives a nasty laugh with a mouthful of blood spits out. Balin can be found in the chamber of records. I can say no... It can say no more. Yoink. Okay, so this thing now says, Heroes do not collect resources during the resource phase. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get our resourcefuls out, so we're pretty low on resources. But this guy does have Steward out. Now, this ability says add one additional resource to when collecting resources, which we will not be doing. So his ability is now negated. And we must exhaust the cave torch to travel here. I oh, may as well do that. Exhaust. We travel to here. We also tap and place two tokens on. Okay. So you now get a card. Now this guy takes six damage to kill. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it. So I'm going to tap this guy, flip, attacking enemy gets plus three. So this guy is killed. And then I'm going to go three, four, five, three, four, five, six. And that kills this guy. Now, the end of the combat phase, this guy is here. So reveal one card from the encounter deck and add it to the staging area. So bang. Oh, it's another one. That is horrendous. We'll attach that to... Dory here, or Ori, or whatever his name is. Okay. So this guy gets a card, which is automatically discarded by... Uh, burning Brand. And then we just go bam, bam, bam. That kills him. We draw a card to see if it's a monster. It is not a monster, so this guy is now dead. And then I'm going to tap you. Peek at the top five. Come on. Oh, look. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have two, four, six. So that's four. We can't cast any of them. So let's just go bam. Return to top. Okay, let's tap you. Top five. You blam. Bam. And 
the bottom and shuffle. Okay, your blammo and your blammo. Okay, tap one, two, but remember we don't collect resources. Now the mod automatically gives resources. So I've placed this little button here. So you just click this button and it will remove everyone's resources by one to negate that resource gain. We also draw a second card because of Ori. We have to be a little bit more picky about our cards. What I really like is, I understand why I haven't got any of my uh, healers. I'm going to tap you, peek at the top five. There's a healer. Bang. So we'll only have three resources. So I'm just going to do that. Return to, oh wait, so we can't even use this guy. So that's three. That means he's not going to have any resources. So that was a completely terrible idea. Okay, that was a bad mistake. Anyway, so we're going to tap you, tap you. And I'm not going to cast anything here. I think I'm going to tap you, get another card, another token. And tap, 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 tap. And let's tap this guy as well. Plus 23. Bam. Deal one damage to each character. Two damage instead of the active location is dark. It's not dark. So it's one damage to each character. So this guy is killed. She gets one wound. She is killed. That was just such a bad move. This guy gets one wound. This guy is killed. This guy gets one wound. 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 We're still plus 17. And that was the first card we drew. Second card. It's another one of these monsters. Let's uh, stick it on you. Bam. So we're plus 17. So that is, may as well tap you. One, two. That clears you. And we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bam. 17 points. We have completed the game. And it's actually a perfect win. A perfect win in my book is when you clear the you clear the quest, but you also have no locations, no monsters. And that's that. That is the end of that. We had a few bits of mistake. I think we had a few mistakes. I definitely forgot to use Longbeard a little more. But that is that, and I will see you guys next time. Just to uh, show you how weird this is, Bam. One, two, three condition attachments for removal. There's another healer here. We didn't get either of our Philly or Killy. And over here, we've got threat reduction. We've got uh, Westward Travelers never came out. More threat reduction. And we also have uh, Light of the Dark, which is really awesome. So, this is just a really bad draws. Anyway, that's enough of that. If you remember, these decks are always in the mod if you want to use them. 
And if you can think of cool names for the decks, let me know. I'll see you guys next time.